All right, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Dr. Hardin, and I want to thank God for you that are uh, going to be sharing with us today. And uh, I want to thank God for our friends and all of you that are tuning in, uh, tuned in to Moments of Inspiration. That's right, Moments of Inspiration. And I apologize for last week. We had some technical problems, and uh, we was not able to share with you. Uh, so, but I want to thank God for all of you uh, that are sharing this morning and for you that are part of Moments of Inspiration. Now, this morning, I'm going to be sharing with you, if you whether you're aware of it or not, uh, uh, we are part of, we, we are a part of what I want to call, uh, we are part of Pentecost. And Pentecost, thank you, uh, Pat, uh, Patricia Chamber, Pentecost is uh, what's coming up is Pentecost Sunday. For you that don't know, it's Pentecost Sunday coming up. And and most people don't even, uh, a lot of churches don't don't even recognize Pentecost Sunday. They don't think about Pentecost Sunday. It is, uh, Pentecost is 50 days after, 50 days after Easter, what we call Easter, uh, the Jews call it uh, Passover, and others have uh, Resurrection Sunday, etc. So it's 50 days after. But what I want to talk to you today about is, uh, Sister Patricia and Brother Shakar, uh, Shakur, I want to talk to you about Pentecostal receiving God's power. It's about receiving God's power. Now I'm going to read uh, Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8, and it says, uh, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witness unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and unto the utmost part of the world, of the earth. Well, what is that saying? That's, that was the promise that Jesus gave them after he rose from the dead, his resurrection. He promised them that they should go and tarry. And the word tarry means wait for the promise in a certain place and that they would be empowered with the Holy Spirit. And so they will receive power. Now, they receive something meaning that you have to accept it. So the Holy Ghost just don't come and give it to you. Because if he, if he give it to you and you reject it, then that's that's your fault that you don't have it. You reject it. There's a lot of Christians that have rejected the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They have received Christ. They are converted. But they do not have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, somebody said, well, you can't be saved and not have this whole baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay, let me give you a good example of that. Peter, all the apostles were saved. They was Jesus, they were saved, but they had not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They had to go and tarry, wait for it to come into his inception into the earth. So you can receive Christ as your Lord and Savior and have salvation and have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, let's look at this. It said, ye shall, this verse 8, uh, uh, verses 8 of chapter one of Acts, Sister Miller, we thank God for you. Uh, so this is verse 8. But ye shall receive power upon you, and ye shall be witnesses of both me and Jerusalem. Now, Jerusalem was the city. So you should be witness to me in the city and unto the and, and, and in Judea. Judea is the, is the state. And then uh, Samaritan is the country. So you should be witness unto me in, this, in the church, uh, not just in the church, but you should be witness unto me, uh, Brother Valon. You should be witness in the city. You should be witness in the state. And you should be witness in the country and then to the utmost part of the world, to the utmost part of the world, once you are filled with this power. Then we go to Acts 2 and verses 1 through 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they was all with one accord in one place. They was all with one accord or one mind. Now, that's something that's hard to get people to have is one mind. And they was all with one mind in one place. And what happened when they had this one mind? What happened to the church when we have the same mind? Think about how we have churches, but how divided we are now just in our religion. There's Kojic. 
There's Baptists, there's Methodists, there's Presbyterians, there are Catholics, there are Lutherans, and there are da 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 Seventh Day Advent, and 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 then they, we got Independents, and uh, don't belong to no denomination, but you do belong to some denomination if it's just one, because when you define who you are, that is denominational. So, but they got all of these things, and we expect God to do the thing that we asked him to do and even in our own churches we are not with one accord no we're not with one accord we're not in unity so notice what happened on in, in verse number two and chapter two and verse number one and when the day of pentecost was fully come, and i'm going to explain pentecost in just a minute was fully calm they were all with one accord in one place one mind one mind in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The word utterance means how as the Spirit gave them the word. What happened? The Spirit gave them the words, and when the Spirit gave them the word, they spoke what they heard. What they heard. They may not even they didn't understand what they were saying themselves. But what we need to know is, why is there Pentecost? Why should we be uh, accepting Pentecost? Why we still talk about Pentecost? The word Pentecost uh, is a, uh, the Greek word changes to Pentecost. It was Pentecost, Pentecost, uh, Pentecost, uh, and, and, and the Greek word is Pentecost, which means 50, 50 days after Easter or Passover, is the Pentecost. Now, the Pentecost was a feast of the week. It was the first harvest, the first harvest, the time they had planted the crop, and then by the time they had planted it, then the crop was coming up. And so it was the first fruit, and they call it Pentecost. It was a holiday for the Jews. It was not just a day, but it was a holiday. And in that holiday of Pentecost, nobody was working. The, the slave did not have to work that day. They didn't plant any crop. Uh, do anything that day. They celebrated the 50th day called Pentecost. Now, here's what happened. Here's what happened. Jesus made his return after he was buried and got up the third day. It was Pentecost day that he showed back up in Jerusalem. Now, he showed up with his power. He showed up with his, with his anointing uh, in the form of the Holy Spirit, in the form of the Holy Spirit. Now, by receiving God's power, the church is able to pursue and fulfill God's plan for us. We can't do nothing, Brother Granville Noel. We can't do anything without the Holy Spirit leading and guiding us and empowering us, empowering us, giving us the power to do what God has told us to do. Ye shall receive power, uh, Sister McIntyre, ye shall receive it. Not just your uncle, your cousin, your nephew, your grandfather. You shall receive power in your body when the Holy Spirit is on you and you are baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. And so Pentecost means a, a new day for us. It was the inception of the church. That's right. They had temples where God would come in the temples, but they got so wicked that God did not come into the temple. The, even in the tabernacle, God was this, the head. The, there were three places in the tabernacle. There was the outer court, and there was the inner court, and there was the uh, there was the uh, the outer court, and there was the inner court, and there was the holies of holy. So there were three positions in that temple of the tabernacle. So God then in the outer court, people came for repenting, uh, uh, Brother Henderson. God bless you and thank you for being with us. They came for, God came for in the outer court for the repentance and the baptism, which was the labor and the, and the forgiveness of sin. Then they had the holies of holy where the priest came in and the shoe bread that they ate from the table 
table, uh, they had to just a loaf per day for each one of the priests that was there. Plus, they had the candlestick that represented the light of the world that gave them light in the midst of their darkness and that in, in the inner court. But the, there was priests that was priests for years, but they never did, and none of them never went into the holies of holies where God was and where the Aaron rod was and where the mercy seat was and where they met God. That's where Moses and Aaron met God in the holies of holies. And so we got to understand that they had all of these things. But the day of Pentecost, something changed. It changed from going to the temple to meet God. It changed from telling the priest, confessing to the priest. It came, it changed from bringing burnt offering. And the day of Pentecost, they was all in one place. Now, sometimes we use the word, and I've used it too, I'm Pentecostal. Well, you're not Pentecostal, because Pentecostal is just 50 days. What you actually is saying, I honor and believe in the charismatic way that they acted on Pentecost. I act out my feelings of the Spirit. That's Pentecostal, what they did on the bed. They spake. They spake with one tongue. They heard them speak. They was all filled and began to do it together. The tongue set on them and they began to do it gather together. And the people thought they were drunk or crazy. But that's charismatic, acting out what you feel. Character rising what you feel. Showing the folks what you feel. Putting your hands up, hollering and praising God falling on the floor, whatever God leads you to do, that's what you do. That's the spirit indwelling in you. And note what he said now in, 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 in 1 Corinthians uh, uh, 6 and, and, and 18 and 19, 18, he said, know ye not, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So now the Holy Ghost is living in us and we have the temple of God. We are the temple of God that dwells in us. So we should not defile the temple so that God will want to dwell in us. So then what then did the Holy Ghost do? He gave them power. Pentecost mean the first beginning of the church. That's the church that Jesus built. Jesus said, upon this rock, I'll build my church and the very gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Solomon built a temple, but it wasn't the church for God. It wasn't God building the temple. Jesus built the temple. And when Jesus built the temple, the temple he built, he brought in the Holy Spirit. He told the disciple that my father and I will come unto you. We will dwell in you and you should be my people and I, you should be my, my, my brothers and sisters and I'll be your God unto to you as long as you do what is right. So what we have to understand then is that 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 this is what happened on Pentecost. Now here's the thing, the question I would like to ask you. What of these holidays, if you had to give up all of them but one, and I'm going to give you four of them, which one would you think is the most important? Would you rather give up Christmas or Easter or, 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 or Easter or, 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 or these out of these four? Now, which one would you rather give up? Would you give up Easter? Would you give up Christmas? Would you give up, uh, 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 what's the other day, Pentecost? Or would you give up the, 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 uh, uh, oh God, what's this fourth one? Let me go back again. Which one of these would you give up or you let go? Uh, would you give up Good Friday? Would you give up Christmas? Would you give up Easter or Pentecost? Now, Easter is the resurrection. Good Friday is the day he died. Christmas, we say, is his birthday. Pentecost is the day that he came in with the Holy Spirit. So which one of them do you think is the most important? Well, brothers and sisters, let me tell you. If the Holy Spirit is not inside of you, it's no need for you to, uh, if the Holy Spirit is not operating in you, Easter don't mean that much to you. The resurrection don't mean that much to you. If Jesus had not brought back the Holy Spirit. He said, I'm going to give you another comforter. He didn't say, I'm going to rise again for you, but I'm going to give you another comfort. He didn't say that you celebrate my birthday, but I'm going to give you another comforter. I and my father will come unto you. He didn't say nothing about Christmas. He didn't say nothing about what he'll do uh, for Easter. He didn't say nothing about what he would do for Good Friday, but what we, we celebrate those days. But my God, without Pentecost, without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, without God putting his power on the inside side of us, we would be nothing. We would, need, we, we, we would not be able to carry out God's will. Yes, we'd be able to lead other folks to Christ. 
Not I'm not telling you that, but you shall receive power, that individual power that gives you the power to cast out demons, give you the power to speak in other tongues. It gives you the power. That's what the disciples, that's what the whole group did, that 120 in the upper room. Now, they didn't really per, per, just particularly to go there uh, uh, and to wait. They went there tarrying. They didn't know what was going to happen. They had never been baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came down on the disciples, but it lifted, it, it, it didn't stay, it lifted up. So so now he told them to go there and wait and you shall receive power. Now Mary, the mother of Jesus, was there. She birthed him, but she was not baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. She was birthed him, but she was not baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. And 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 the 500 went up into the room, I'm told, but only 120 stayed. You have to wait on God. There's a there's God going to give us an awakening. There's an awakening that we that have gotten the Holy Ghost and been baptized with the Holy Ghost. We have become sluggish and become nonchalant, thinking about we're not we're not on fire like we once were. We need to stir this gift up again. This is the gift that God has given us. And Paul told Timothy, stir up the gift that was given to you by the laying hands of, uh, on of the pastors and the Presbyterian. They laid hands on you and God filled you with the Holy Ghost. Stir that gift up. Stir that gift up that God has given you, the, the, the Holy Spirit that has given you. They was with one accord. When the church get with one accord and get off the cord, God is going to do things that he never done before. And they was in unity. And what happened? When they got in unity, it said they heard heard something. They heard a sound as a mighty worship wind. It didn't say it was a mighty worship wind, but it's what it, that's, that's the only way they could describe it. It was described like a hurricane coming in, a, blow, a tornado, whatever, coming in, blowing. Then all of a sudden, when it got their attention, that's what as they, it, it, they, they it got their attention, and when it got their attention, then they saw something. They saw tongues like fire. Now, they, 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 it wasn't fire, but the way they was moving, it created fire, just like they do now, with cartoons and other things, they can create fire. So it looked like fire to them, and then it set upon each of them, every one of them at the same time. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave the word. What were the words the Spirit gave? All the people would come into Jerusalem for the Pentecost. To come in to separate. They had to come from whatever nation they was in. They had to come to Jerusalem. If they was in miles of Jerusalem, they came in to celebrate. And the one that couldn't come in were well, once a year, they would come in and bring anything. But there were so many there. At least 16 different uh, nations was rep represented with Jews at Pentecost. And these Jews didn't just all speak Hebrew. They spoke different language of what country they was in. Well, when they came to Jerusalem for Pentecost, on that day, when God gave them their tongues, the tongues that he gave them spoke in every language of the people that was there. So everybody there heard them in their own language. Even though the people that were speaking in tongues, they didn't know what they were saying. But they heard, the people that heard them said, how is it that we hear these people speaking in our own language, in our own tongue? And so therefore, they said they must be drunk or something happened to them. And Peter said, these are not drunk as ye suppose. Notice he didn't say they weren't drunk, but not drunk from wine. The bars or the tabernacles are tears. They're not open yet. And what we need now, the whole church need to get drunk again off of the new wine of the Holy Spirit and let God come back in again and anoint us again. Give us a fresh anointing again. Give us power again. Power to cast out demons. Power to call out the people to be healed for cancer, for diabetes, for stroke, and for all of these diseases. Migraine, headache, people that have been in accident, disfigured in their body, been burned, and, and some people that paralyzed with stroke, they can't move certain parts of their limb, can't talk right, mouth twisted, eyes dim, all of these things. Ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Ye shall be witnesses unto me. When you tell me that you're baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost and you are ashamed to witness, oh, no, you're not ashamed to witness. You are glad to tell somebody about Jesus. You are glad to tell somebody. The song came out. Say, I, 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 I said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I just couldn't keep it to myself. You know, it's something about the Holy Spirit. When you get the Holy Spirit, you got to tell somebody, even though you're not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for coffee, it's the power of God unto salvation. That's right. So you're going to tell somebody about it. You're going to tell your 
brother. You're going to tell your mom. You're going to tell your friends about it. You, they may think you're going crazy and lost your mind, and they are not altogether wrong because you got to lose this mind to get the mind of Christ. And the mind of Christ in him, we live, we move, and we have our being. So what we need to do, God, there was a promise on and Acts 1 and 8 that we will receive power. So we have received the power. Now, this promise just didn't come in Acts 1 and 8. It was also in Joel chapter 2, verses uh, uh, 27 through 31. He Joel told us that in the last days, God is going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters is going to, uh, uh, going to prophesy. Now, what he was saying, it's going to be for everybody. So the Holy Spirit is not just for a certain ethnicity of people. It's not just for the, the rich and just for the poor. It's for everybody. Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? That's the question that, that Paul put to the uh, to, 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 to Apollo, uh, uh, Apollo and the people that he had led to Christ. But they only knew John the Baptist. This is the 19th chapter of Acts. They only knew John the Baptist, uh, 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 how they he saved and they got saved. But Paul said, you shall receive the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And, and, and Apollo was an eloquent man. He was educated. He was well educated. He was a good teacher. But when Priscilla and, and Aquila saw him teaching some of the people, and, 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 and he was only teaching them about John baptism, wasn't telling them about the Holy Spirit because he didn't know about it. But when they, they went and taken him aside, we don't quite embarrass folk, they took him aside, the Bible said, and when they explained to him more clearly about the Holy Spirit, and then Paul, while Paul was at, at, at Corinth, and, 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 and at Ephesus, and he came to Corinth, and he found the disciples that, 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 that Apollo had been teaching, and Apollo had been teaching them. He was an eloquent man, and Paul said to them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they said, we have not as much as heard whether there be in the Holy Spirit. We only know about John baptism, and the Bible said Paul laid hands on them, and they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, here's the thing. The Holy Spirit came on the Jews first. But the Jews were so selfish, and they thought only there they were the one that they could be saved. But God said he was going to do a new thing. He was going to merge the Gentiles and, and the Jews together. So God had to call Peter and send him down to Cornelius' house to get to lay hand on them. And Peter heard them, uh, uh, them Italians speak in tongue just like they had did. And then not only that, God had to knock Paul off of his high horse and, and put him on straight street so Paul would go to the Gentile. So everybody, the Holy Spirit is for everybody. And my God, when you receive power, then you're going to spread that power out. You're going to come into unity. You're going to be there. They was all in one place. They all was praying. They all was on the same on the same link. They was not one over here and one disconnected. But this hundred and twenty. That's why they sent the other uh, three hundred and eighty home. They went home because they was not together. I don't know why they went, and I'm not gonna try to super superpose my ideas on what why they went. But all I know that a hundred and twenty stayed. And I want to say to you, if you haven't received the Holy Ghost, stay and wait on it. Seek God for it. Ask God for it. You got to ask him. You got to want it. He that hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. And so you got to want this thing. So what happened here? They was all with one accord. They was together. They was praying. They was praying. The apostles, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and all the other folk, they was praying. And then the power came in, and they began to speak with other tongues. What we're doing today that say, what are we doing today that say we are baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost? What are we doing? We come to church. We sing, we go home, and we don't think about it no more sometimes until the next time we go to church. But ye shall receive power, our greatest power for the witness. We should be telling everybody that we think of that don't have it, and we have the opportunity on our job and break time when we, we need to tell them, say, hey, are you saved? We need to ask them, oh, do you know, if you die right now, <clears throat> do you know? whether you go to heaven or not. Do you believe in Jesus? And if they said no, you tell them, say, well, could just, just give me one minute. All you got to do is if you believe in him and don't believe in him, if you just pray this prayer with me, it'll change your whole heart. Father, forgive me for all of my sin. I know I'm a sinner and I realize I'm a sinner, but I'm asking Jesus to come into my heart and change me, God, and save me. And fill me, God, with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If you pray that prayer, and confess that you're a sinner, God will save you, and God will, uh, will, will save you that moment. And then you can ask God for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You've got to be saved before you can receive the Holy Spirit. 
You cannot put new wine in an old bottle. They would burst. The skin that they had to put it in would burst. So you can't get the Holy Spirit before you get saved. You have to be saved to get the Holy Spirit. Then when you get the Holy Spirit, you have power. That it, Look, the Holy Spirit, you can have a God. That's salvation. But without power, <coughs> excuse me, without power, without that unction, without that unction, without that help, you got, the bullock is not in. So you can bluff with the God. But if it comes time that you have to shoot, you can't do it. Because you don't have the power. The power is in the bullet. So the Holy Spirit is the bullet in our power, in our body, that gives the power to kill the devil, to knock him out, to take him off his course. Words, words, words are have power. There's power in words. What word you need? The word of God. The word of God is quick, is powerful, more powerful than, 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 than anything that you can have. It discerns between the, the thoughts. It discerns between the will and your mind and your spirit. He can separate them. God knows when you're for real. We need that power. So Sunday is Pentecostal Sunday. I'm going to be preaching about why we celebrate Pentecost. Why we celebrate it. We celebrate Pentecost because it's the day that the church came into action. The day the church came in, they had temples. They had other places to go. <coughs> But they didn't have the Holy Ghost on the inside of them. Ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come up on you. So Acts is the history book in the New Testament. What is history? His story, her story. Now, his story, her story is recorded. They recorded Peter's story. They recorded Paul's story. They recorded Philip's story. They recorded many of them's story. What they did after the Holy Ghost came on them. Before the Holy Ghost came, Paul was bringing people then to, uh, to be put in prison, to be beaten, to be whipped. But after the Holy Ghost, he, came, he found them with love, with kindness, with power. He prayed for them. He cast out demons. He witnessed even to Agrippa. He told Agrippa about what happened to him. And when he got through telling this story to Agrippa, Agrippa said, I, you almost persuaded me to be a Christian. And Paul said, I, I'm not satisfied that I almost did it. I would that you were the same as I am without the chain. Without the chain. There's somebody that's waiting for you. Somebody waiting for you to use what God has given you, the weapon of the Holy Spirit, to witness to them. There's a man that's outside of our door that need the Holy Spirit. There's a woman, there's a boy, there's a child. There's you. If you don't have it, you need it. We all need it. So Pentecostal Sunday, why we celebrate? Because God brought the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. God anointed us and baptized and filled us with the Holy Spirit. And that same Holy Spirit is still doing it today. God is not dead. He is still alive. And I want you to know he's still alive. He's still healing. He's still giving joy. He's still casting out demons. He's still delivering us. He's still giving us freedom. And we have this power. And let me tell you something. Put this power in action. Stop, stop squinching the Holy Spirit. Put what you have in action. Do it. Just like Peter and John. The man came to them and he asked for arm. And they said, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, I'm going to give it to you. What did they have? They had a look. And they had a word. And they had a test. He said, look on us. And they look, he looked on them. And then he said, they looking on them, expecting to receive some money and he looked on him and he gave him a word he said get up and when he got the man couldn't get up he gave him a touch and got him by the arm and snatched him up and the man was leaping in joy somebody need a word somebody need a look and somebody need a touch <coughs> they need a touch are you available <coughs> are you available to give them that touch. Are you available? Will you do it? Will you do it for God? Will you allow God anointed to break every yoke? I'm going to pray. Dear God, thank you for these that are tuned in to moments of inspiration. I bind you, Satan. You don't want this word to go out. 
But thank you, God, for bringing me through it. And Satan, I bind you now that you do not have control over my voice. You will not stop me <clears throat> from witnessing to these people. Father, I pray that you anoint them with the Holy Spirit. I pray that your word go out and will not return void. And that you, God, will save, deliver, and set free. You, God, will anoint pastors, ministers, missionaries, church workers. During this Pentecostal Sunday and during these weeks to come after, that again, we will share your word. Again, we will preach people about the Holy Spirit and about the joy that it brings. In Jesus' name, feel pastors, feel parishioners everywhere, whatever denomination they are in. Fill them again with the Holy Spirit, those that have freed. There's many fillings, one filling, but many more anointings. Anoint them again. Now, Father, we pray and thank you for this opportunity to share with your people. In Jesus' name, <coughs> thank God. Amen. <coughs> amen and amen. You know, <clears throat> listen, the devil really didn't want me to finish this message because it's about the Holy Spirit. So he, he don't want you to get it, but I believe you got it. I believe you understand what's going on. The devil will attack you for the word's sake. He won't attack you for doing other stuff. But to get into the word, he'll attack you. But I thank God, I praise God, that Pentecost came to bring the church into power. And you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit have come up on you. Now, here's the thing I'd like to ask you to do. Plant a seed into this ministry. If God have did anything for you, Plant a seed. Great Open Door Worldwide Ministry <clears throat> It's basically worldwide. Worldwide. You'd be surprised the text message I get from other countries. And if you could plant a seed in this, it's help keep us going. This is why we're here. We're here for to help you. We're here for God. God put this in our heart. I've had moments of restoration on radio for 14 years. And you can share in push pay. You can share in give a five. Or you can mail it in to 135 West Victoria Street here in the city of Long Beach, California, 90805. Or if you're in the city or close around it and you want to drop it off, drop off an offering. Tithe. Great Open Door Worldwide Ministry. Thank you so much for how you support us. Thank you that are not a part of Great Open Door, how you support us. And I pray God best will be yours. And I pray that you will receive the power of the Holy Spirit. I do. I pray that you receive that power. So until next week, at the same time, with God help, I will be back with more moments of inspiration. Have a blessed day and may God best be yours.